Hi everyone, John here. Welcome back to another Continuum tutorial. For the past three days, I've been deep inside Continuum 2024, creating brand new presets for the new audio visualizer effect. Been having tons of fun, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to create one more preset, but this time record the process so you can learn more about what audio visualizer can do for you. Let's jump straight in. Okay, so as usual, I'm working here in After Effects, and you can see here's my comp with all of the presets that I've created. It's been so much fun working in Audio Visualizer. It's amazing how many different kinds of looks you can create with this effect. And I could probably spend two or three weeks and come up with hundreds of different presets for this. But um, so far I've got about 31, but I'd like to make that 32. So why don't we start from scratch and this hasn't been scripted, so I'm going to build this with really, um, you know, no preconceptions about what we're going to finish with. Let's see how easy it is and whether we can come up with something really good. So what I'll do is just create a new solid and let's just solo that. And I've got the audio in here already. This just this audio track down here. So... I'll apply Audio Visualizer. I'm just going to search for it in the Effects and Presets. Audio Visualizer. And double click. Okay, so please select an audio layer. So I'm going to choose my audio right down the bottom there. And here we get this vanilla waveform. All right, so this is my starting point. So let's just build something. This has been designed in a way where you work from top to bottom. So it's very easy to use. So let's just do that. Under Generator. Audio style, I could start with waveform, I could start with frequency, but what I'm finding when I create looks using this effect is I, I will start from the top and go to the bottom, but then I'll come back up and, you know, uh, I might have a certain look and I'll try it with waveform and then I'll try it with frequency and see how that looks. This effect demands experimentation and if you do spend a bit of time experimenting in it, it's just amazing what you can come up with. So let's just start with waveform. And the same goes for whether you're going to choose dots or bars, um, you know, or even a single dot. You'll try different ones, you'll make changes, and then you'll come back and try other ones to see what it looks like. So I don't know, maybe we start with bars. Give that a go. Bars, waveform, resolution, it doesn't really matter at the moment. I'm finding that I'm spending most of my time, you know, between about 32 and 128. It, it really depends on what you're looking for and obviously how you're going to use this uh, visualized audio. Let's go for 64. Like I said, I have no plans here. Um, scale, that will, you know, be changed depending on the audio that you have. And you now I can change the width to, I, I tend to like more fine kind of looks. If you have a look at any of my presets um, in the effect, uh, FX editor, you'll see that a lot of mine are really fine looking. So let's just go with that. Um, there is a roundness option, so I could round that out, but I'm going to leave that as it is for now. Also, uh, an interesting taper option. So when I enable that, nothing really happens. I've got to choose my options in here. I generally just turn everything on, so it hasn't really done much with that. We can have a look with frequency, and we probably need to adjust Let's see, we'll go to probably dots. There we go. So now with dots, you can start to see how that looks. And that actually doesn't look too bad. See how we're going from very tapered at the bottom to thicker at the top. I don't know, maybe, maybe we, we stay with dots and we go with that look. And why don't we change this to waveform? Hmm, interesting. And let's see, adjust the scale. And let's see, adjust the width. That's something I haven't really done yet. And the height, make them quite thin. There's no rules with this effect. That's looking pretty interesting, isn't it? So let's go with that for now. 
And let's see. Uh, obviously, we can change the color. You can choose a color. What I tend to do is I like to work in white, and I think about the color later. So let's see. We've got a peak hold option. Now, peak hold will be grayed out if you've chosen waveform. If I chose frequency, then I will be able to see peak hold. So now we get the peak hold added on top there. So that's interesting as well. When we turned on mirror and warping, we might come back and change some of these um, settings. <laughs> the final look might not be anything like this. So we'll just go with what we had before. We'll go with waveform, something like that, and just keep coming down here. So under waveform, we've got an option for style for absolute value or range. And range is interesting because it puts part of the waveform on the bottom of the line and part of it on the top. And you know, it's a sort of a stylistic approach. It's quite nice. It looks kind of like a sine wave there. And keep in mind what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to come up with a look that I haven't already created with some of my other presets. That's actually not looking too bad. We've got uh, you know, duration, there's, you can, you can sort of fine tune with these settings. And like I said, a lot of it is to do with sort of fine tuning. That kind of breaks it up a little bit. There's no rules with this effect at all. Now, I think I've got my audio uh, set to off. That's why we're not hearing it. Interesting, but we're not really getting much of a, you know, a change in the waveform on the beat. So I'm going to just bring that back to 33. What if we drop it right down? something a bit lower. What does that do? Okay, I'm going to come back to 33 and I'm just going to twirl that up. And we've got tuning options, but this is for frequency, okay? So this will be grayed out if you've got waveform checked. And color as well. So we've already looked at that. So let's twirl open gradient. Now, Gradient could work quite well with this look. But also, like I said before, coloring is something I do more towards the end. So I'm just going to turn that off. Just like to get my look sort of set up with a white, uh, with, with, you know, to start, I like to start with white and then color it later. Okay, so we have a pre-transform option. And with these, I haven't been spending a lot of time kind of changing scale or position, but I have been sort of experimenting with rotation um, and with tumble because we can get this sort of 3D sort of DVE looks, which can be quite interesting. And also spin as well. I'm just gonna leave that as it is for now. And let's try mirroring. This is one of the features that I really like. So what we'll do is we'll just turn that on Ah, so you can see how that works. So we can get a symmetrical look. So let's leave that on. Kind of like that. And let's come down and look at polar warp. So polar warp's going to uh, you know, distort this into a circle. Like that. Interesting. Oh, this is starting to come together, isn't it? I'm starting to kind of like that. Definitely starting to like that. So let's play around with this. Uh, outer radius will bring down. That'll stop it from being cropped by the edges. Notice how we are seeing, obviously, another circle there. We've got tile turned on. So we could go tile or reflect. You know, if you want to fill the frame up with rings like this. Just keep dragging that outer radius down. I think I'm going to go for probably a single one. So 
You can change inner radius as well, and that will also increase the amount of rings. I'm just going to undo a couple of times and bring that down like, like that. And I'm going to change wrap X and wrap Y to no. And that way we're not going to get those outer rings. How's this look? It's actually starting to look really interesting, isn't it? So you can see I've been fairly arbitrary with what I've chosen up here. Because once I've mirrored it and polar warped it, it you know, you, you really start to get a feel for, you know, something more specific that you're going for. And then we can come back up to the top. Let's just come on a good frame there. And then we can start playing around with this. Things like scale. See how we sort of spread it out. That's interesting, isn't it? This is actually looking really nice. Every single time I use Audio Visualizer, I come up with something different. Amazing. What about width? Let's play with width. Okay, so if I want to make it a little thinner. It's a, I don't know exactly what everything does in this effect, but just by you know clicking and dragging, I can instantly see what, what it does because it's so fast. And I'm really happy to say... This is the third day using Audio Visualizer, and I'm going to cross my fingers here. I haven't had a single error or a single bug. It's been fantastic to work with. Okay, roundness. Let's come back and let's try frequency. Interesting. You can also see by me doing this how you can start with a, with a look, and then just changing one parameter changes the entire look. What I tend to do is if I've got something I think this is looking good, what I'll do is I'll just duplicate that layer and then I'll just leave that, you know, and I'll come back to it later and I'll keep working. So let's have a look here. Bars. A oh, bars make something that's more solid. That's interesting too, isn't it? And what else have we got? Ellipse. If that doesn't really change much, the dot style with this particular look. We've got a single dot. That's interesting as well. And notice how by doing that, it's made this more simple. What if I change the scale like that? And then I turn this one on. And then I just used a different blend mode like screen. See that? See how we can actually make even more complex looks just by making a slight adjustment to something you've already created and then you know mixing it with the other one using blend modes and I could come in here and uh, you know change the color for that one obviously this is not finished but you can see how very quickly and easily you can create really complex looking visualizations by combining different layers so I'm just going to come back to where I was and just come back to there and let's keep going so we've had a bit of a play here what about if we just muck around with the resolution <laughs> it just blows me away look at that that's amazing just put that one on with that one and turn this to screen and what do we got here amazing right i mean such an interesting effect so much fun to play with So even if you can't get exactly the look you want with one version of Audio Visualizer, you know, you can with two or three or four or five or more combined together. I, I love that one. I'm going to just duplicate that because I might actually make three or four new presets after this tutorial's finished. So let's just turn those off. I'm going to come back to this one because we'll keep exploring this one. I don't want to change the look completely. I, I think I want to sort of fine tune this look a little more. Now just zero in on this one a little bit more. I'm loving how this taper makes this kind of look 3D. It's almost spherical. It's like a sphere that's kind of been blown out. That's really nice. I'm just going to do a quick save. And we'll start looking at color pretty soon. I'm really liking taper. What if I just turn that off? Ooh, look at that. That's looking interesting as well. So something to think about 
trying the different taper options. I think we'll come down now and we've looked at mirror, we've looked at polar warp. Um, yeah, let's let's think about color now and glow. So what color will we make this? I tend to like a lot of, you know, either cool blues or electric blues um, or something really warm, you know, something really fiery. Why don't we try and make this, um, I haven't really gone for anything, anything green. I don't know, maybe we can try something green. So there's a couple of ways to color it. We could just click on the color here and just choose a green, something pretty bright like that. So that's looking okay. Uh, because it's kind of disappearing, we could come back and play with the scale. Uh, let's see, or at least these settings, see if we can thicken it up a little bit. So width, width adds a little bit to it. Or does it? No, width is not really doing very much. Height, here we go. So I can actually just, just thicken that up a little bit by increasing the height. So now that we've got our general look in place, now we're just fine tuning, right? A little less experimentation and a little more, you know, focused tweaking. Uh, that's looking really good. Okay, so that's if we wanted a solid color, but let's try it with a gradient because I do like the green, but if I use a gradient, I can add a bit of variation to that. So I'm just going to check enable and just come to a, a better frame here. It doesn't look bad with that green, red, and orange. And obviously you can just, you know, if you're doing this with me, you can just create whatever you like. What I might do is just sample that green for each of these. And I'm going to be just going to play around here. What if we added some white in there? No, drag that. Maybe make it a little darker in the middle. And I don't know, slightly blue, maybe. No, blue doesn't really work. It's a little darker like that. How's that look? Let me give this a little bit of a uh, bit of depth. What about if we try color three, make that a little lighter? Make more a little more yellow. Now that looks really washed out, doesn't it? Something a little more that. And I really just, you know, I play around with this and just see what I can come up with. See that. That is looking a little more interesting. It's slightly bright at the top, slightly darker down there. And it's just a little better than having a flat color. I don't mind that at all. And you can play around with the control points for the gradient. You now just dragging those in, dragging those around and seeing how that affects the gradient. Obviously you can use the parameters down here, but I like to just click on these control points in the comp window and just drag those around. I don't get too um, you know, uptight about these, these numbers here. All right, that's looking pretty good. So we'll come down and just add a little bit of glow. And it's not really like looking like very much. I'm just going to increase the intensity like that. I tend to like my initial glow to have a smaller radius. So it sort of hugs a little tighter around it, you know, something like something like that. That's looking nice, because then what I like to do is turn on the secondary glow. Just enable that, and with the secondary glow, it's blue by default. I'm going to just make that probably green, and make that big. I can link the glow to the, uh, the top version, but I'm not going to link it. I'm just going to bring the intensity up like that and bring the radius right up. Not too much. It can actually disappear if you, um, if you take it too high with the radius. So we'll turn that on and off. So that's without, and that's weird. We've got a really beautiful glow. So that's looking pretty nice. Let's have a little look at that.
Notice how we are kind of losing that subtle color variation when it's actually moving. I'm just going to come in and just play around with those colors a bit more. Just come back up to here. I'm not totally convinced that a gradient's the right thing to use for this, but um, just going to keep playing around. Ooh, geez, look at that. You can obviously go crazy with this. You may be adding something something a little different in there. Maybe red is a good thing to add in there. And obviously it depends on, you know, exactly how you're going to use this. But I want to do something that uh, looks a little more appealing. That's not bad. Try that. That's looking a little better, isn't it? Just with that really, really almost, it's got a sort of like a, what is that, a, a greeny aquamarine color. That's looking really nice. So once I've got the color in place and I've got the glow in place, what I like to do is come down and just do a bit of color correction if I need it. So underneath Film Glow, obviously you can change the hue. So you could completely change the look up if you just change the hue. Uh, brightness, contrast, gamma is actually quite a good one. Because if it's looking a little too dark if you or a little too bright, you can just play with the gamma and just fine tune. So I use Color Correct just to tweak, just to fine tune. There's things like color temperature in here as well, depending on whether you want it a little cooler like that or you know a little warmer like that really handy and you've got red green and blue channels as well so you can come in and fine tune the look to your liking so don't get too tied up with the colorization in the gradient and in the film glow because you can fine tune it which is really nice now let's just have a quick look at how that might look with a background obviously you might want to place this over footage but this is actually looking really good on something dark so i would probably place it on black but if I change it to something like gradient, obviously the default's not good. But you know, if we came in and just change the gradient settings, maybe make it black at the bottom, you know, black at the top, and maybe like a deep green in the middle, or probably something like that. You know what I mean? So it looks like some sort of a horizontal strip of light. A lot of my presets are without gradient backgrounds. I guess this really, once again, depends on how you're using it. So you could play around with that, but I'll probably want to bring that up a little bit. And you could add a gradient in there as well. Just completely depends on what you're creating. I'm actually going to use solid just like that because I prefer that. And I think that's looking pretty good. And we are losing a bit of the glow. So we might just come back before we save this. I do want to do a little more tweaking at the top to see what we can change it to. But we might just come into our film glow and just increase the intensity a bit. And our secondary glow now increase the intensity a little bit just to make that a little brighter i like that it's got brighter the brighter color because the glow hits that area it's not like the whole thing is just completely glowing i like areas of glow so obviously when the music changes we get glow in certain areas which looks really nice and that looks pretty good Okay, I'm just going to save that and let's finish this preset off by just coming in and seeing how it looks when we choose other options. Okay, look at that. Wow. That looks interesting. I, like, I do like the color. I think the color is actually looking quite nice. Uh, let's try bars. 
Ah, you see, bars don't work because there's obviously way too much glow, so you'd have to fine tune that. Just going to undo that and try different shapes. Circle makes that smaller, but I quite like that as well. Why don't we just duplicate that and we'll change that one to, what was it, uh, circle. And we'll change the blend mode to, what, add, like that. And we'll just increase the scale. Push that out. Look at that. See if we made that even more complex and even more interesting. Just by making just a subtle tweak to it. <laughs> you can literally, uh, and I have, I've just spent hours and hours just playing in this. And the time has just flown. Really, you know, put some music on, put your headphones on and just go for it. So resolution, how does that look? Interesting, changing the resolution of that one makes those dots a bit thicker. I'm just going to turn that one off, come back to this one and change the resolution here. Okay, that makes that a little finer. So once again, get your basic look in place and, you know, work uh, with a white waveform, try mirroring, try warping, and then add your color, and then go back and try different settings and see what you can create, exactly like the way I've just done it. And once you've got the look set up that you like, you can come into the FX editor, and you can give it a name. So I'm just going to cancel that just for a moment because I want to check so this is a waveform dots and it also has some mirroring as well. So have I created waveform dots? I just want to make sure I get my naming right. So dots waveform taper. I'm going to say I haven't. I'm going to call this waveform dots mirrored. FX editor. And I'm going to click name this waveform dots mirrored and just give this some tags like uh, let's see mirror it's got some warp it's got some glow okay I think that's okay waveform dots and glow and I'm just going to call this what it is so it's um waveform dots with taper just taper mirror and and warp just something simple like that obviously audio visualizers are very visual so you can see what it is just by looking at it so descriptions are handy though if you want to leave a note for yourself or You'll notice with some of these presets that I suggested that you try it with other presets and I've put the name of those presets. So definitely check those out. So I'm going to click OK. And that is now a preset which will ship in this brand new audio visualizer effect in Continuum 2024. All right, so hopefully that's given you some insight into how I use audio visualizer to create presets. We're super pumped here at Boris FX to see what you can create with this brand new effect. To learn more, visit borisfx.com where you can also download a fully functioning demo of Continuum. For now, this is John. I'll see you in the next tutorial.